Hot dogs and buns? Yep. Got the charcoal? Uh-oh. We're out of charcoal. What? Well, then what are we gonna eat? Don't worry, I got you covered. Hello. Wow, well, that was quick. Yep, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, have a good night. You too. Hey guys, Papa John's. Nice. Oh, yummy. How'd you know? I always do. One. Well, it looks like John's trying to make dinner again. Got the ketchup and mustard? Yep. Got the relish? Yep. Hot dogs and buns? Yep. Pony Hockey back here in the St. Croix Valley Rec Center. And for all of you joining us here on Valley Access Channels TV, already back to pony hockey season. And it's great to be here. It's tonight's Stillwater. Welcome in. Benilde St. Margaret's. Hans Bristol, Don Ackerman, welcome you into the rec center here in Stillwater. Don, great to have hockey season back. Crazy that it's back already. And for the ponies this year, there's some firepower, some stars bringing back, as well as a good mix of new faces. Yeah, we've got a good matchup tonight. Last year's number seven and number nine final ranked teams on here on the ice to get the season started. It's an exciting day. Yeah, really strong schedule for the ponies to open up this season. We've got a chance to catch up with Head coach Andy Cashman, she'll join us later on, but the energy and the excitement, Don, you can really feel that from Coach Andy. Oh, she's ready to go, that's for sure. So the Husk, the uh, Ponies and Red Knights getting all set to go here for action at the St. Croix Valley Rec Center. Great to have everybody joining us here, and we're going to stay on our camera here on our opening night. What's one key, Don, for you tonight in something this early on in the year that you'd like to see from these ponies? Well, Coach kind of gave us an insight to that, right? We moved Addie Finn up to the front line. Let's keep an eye on that. That'll be fun. I think those three seniors that are starting have a good chemistry, and it'll be fun to watch them vibe off each other, which, and I completely expect that's why that change was made. Get some excitement, put some energy into it. Number 22's knocks some body around, so we'll see how she does that as a center. It was a thriller between these two last year. It was a 3-1 lead for Benilde going into last year's game between these two teams into the third period. And the Ponies came back, but Benilde the victors with a late, late goal in that victory against Stillwater. On their home ice this year, they open up a new season. As we welcome you into another season of Pony Hockey here on VAC TV. Right away, physical start, collision at center ice. Doesn't guess who's involved? Any yeah. whistle, and guess who, Don? We're going to be seeing a lot of number 22, Addie Finn, on this top line this year. Yeah, and hit, maybe hitting her is part of the strategy to, you know, get. don't let her be initiator, let her be the contact receiver. St. Martin can't collect up the far wall, gets cleared out through neutral ice, right at the Benilde red line. It's trying to get fired in there by Addie Finn in our opening seconds here from the St. Croix Valley Rec Center as Ashlyn Hoff moves in, trails it into the corner, and Benilde they're able to stick right there and get a takeaway. Just for a moment, control it out of their own defensive zone. Andy Cashman is the second year head coach for the Stillwater Ponies. On the other side, the Benilde St. Markets Red Knights. Kelly Panic and Kevin Gray, of course. Kelly Panic, a very well-known name throughout girls and women's hockey. He's Olympian Golden Gopher as well, now in charge of this Red Knights team. Bit of space for Lasko to attack into up ice. It's stripped away right onto the stick of Addy Morris and looking for an outstretching pass. Koopman wasn't there to collect it. Now battles for it in the corner. Yeah, and like you said, we have the Red Knights literally in red today, and the Ponies are in a black and white getup that says Ponies on them. Sharp looking. Very nice looking, looking sweaters, yeah. absolutely. Little red trim on there to indicate it. There, I don't know if there's enough red for Stillwater fans who just, you know, they live and die in that color. Absolutely. But uh, there's nice piping on there, nice jerseys. The Red Knights bringing the red into town here tonight. One of those 
tricky early season matchups for these two teams, but I think Don might give these coaching staffs a good uh, a good feel of where their teams were at so early on. Yeah, we have a turnover right inside of the zone. It was onto the stick of Hackler. But go back to that last point, Don, a good measuring point to start the year. Yeah, kind of how you wanted to. You talk about a hard season, strong season for Stillwater start. That's okay because the goal is to finish strong too. Stewart with a nice shot in. That is Lily Timmons in goal for the Ponies. Comes up with what is the first shot on goal for the Red Knights. So there's a battle for it right at the middle of St. Margaret red line. Gelled, gelled forward, but Bailey Gray couldn't jump on top of it. Comes right back out through neutral for Rusinski. And it's flipped over the top for Josie Lang to chase down as the Red Knights skate in offside with 14.31 left in our first period. And seeing that first shot on goal and a recognizable name in goal for the Ponies in Lily Timmons. I like you recognizing that too, especially when you think to yourself, did you think it would take two minutes for a shot to get on net? Absolutely. It's physical and well-trained as these two teams are. And St. Martin just sends in a blast out from the far point, goes wide. Ends up into the corner, stretches out to the half wall, safely onto the stick of Alexa March. It's the important part of this defensive unit this year for the Ponies. It's Brooke Nelson stick handling through neutralized. Had to get crafty, keep that puck on her sip. March plays it in deep. And it's chased down in the corner by St. Martin. It's the opening minutes here of a brand new season. These two teams, their seasons, both of their sides coming to their season. And it close, we've got an icing while the faceoff down in the Stillwater zone. Both making it, falling in the section final of last year's, but a 19 win season for Stillwater. 17 wins for Benilde St. Margaret's and goes back to the strength of these two programs. Yeah, and strength of the section, right? I mean, it's really tough. You, they're, they're probably, probably all the teams in this section would probably be the best team in any other section, certainly in any other state. Boy, that one just somehow found its way through traffic and kicking out to make that kick save. Demetra Walsma had to be right on top of a loose puck and a dangerous chance there for the Ponies right off a draw. Tangled up, and it'll come up with it in front of goal. Bit of space. Timmons have to make a save. Rebound and another chance in Benilde score. That puck came free to the far post and right on top of it there for Benilde. It appeared to be Tala Hansen. Yep who hammered that home in the Red Knights strike first. Good hard working goal. I mean, that's what you want to do. You put a shot on net. She gets the deflect, she gets the defensive block on that, kicks the save out to the side, and she sit and the teammates sitting there waiting for it. That's exactly what you want to do. So the Benilde Red Knights strike first. 1327 left in this first period. It is Benilde who jump out to the lead. We talked about last year it was a Red Knights lead into the third period. Ponies had to force a comeback. Still wondering if found themselves trailing by a goal. Just kind of a puck down. It just felt like it was just sitting in front of Timmons too long, and the Red Knights made the Ponies pay. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what they plan to do. I would expect the Stillwater Ponies to do the exact same if they get the chance, or when they get the chance. So it's Tala Hansen who's going to be on top of that goal for us to start here. And Benilde St. Margaret, they have themselves a lead. So Red Knights up one, open their season with a lead here on the road at Stillwater. As Ponies try and work it out of neutral ice and works its way all the way in deep to Walsma. And ends up back out to the far corner for the Red Knights. And well, we talked about the measuring stick, kind of the tipping point to really top notch Class 2A teams as coming into the zone again is Benilde moving in on a chance and Timmons comes up with a save and a great look on goal that time from Sienna Carver. And Timmons comes up with the stop. Yeah, Hassler did a great job there going left. I think number 97 did a great job trying to juke her to the right but went left. I believe you're right. I do believe that was Kendall Hassler who was in on that breakaway, not 27 and that being Sienna Carver. As with 11.55 to go here in this first period, these... Stillwater Ponies find themselves down a goal here to open up their season against the Red Knights. Looked out over the center red line. Lang will chase back into their defensive zone. Tries to stretch it out here to St. Martin who turns up ice. 
Number seven, looking to start off the season to a hot start. Flicks it in front of goal. Nelson was there, kind of backhanded it just wide. And a good look, though, there from Stillwater. Such a good look. There are many fans on the Stillwater side who stood up for the goal, which they thought was imminent. Burning trying to turn it ahead here for the Red Knights. Just, just that. Takes one carom off the wall and will stretch through the Stillwater zone as we will get an icing back inside of the Benilde St. Margaret zone. 11 to 15 to go. Hansen, the goal scorer, and the Red Knights up 1 0. Yeah, and I, I like to keep an eye on the icings too. You know, to me, that indicates some of the game flow, some of the play, and when you're trying to get your team a rest. Interesting to see Benilde St. Margaret with the lead and also icing more often than Stillwater does. Well, we noted it. some of the depth and options that Annie Cashman's going to have. Boy, Kevin Gray and Kelly Panic here. First goal of the year to a ninth grader. That's not too bad as the Red Knights move back in again. Good look on goal there from Bryn Heising, another ninth grader. Nice glove stop, though, for the Ponies senior, Lily Timmons. Yeah, and you, you talk about youth there, too. It looks like Benilde St. Margaret's. They've got a young team, they have, but they're very experienced as far as hockey goes. Don't let that ninth grader uh, scare you off. They are dangerous. Or they should scare you off. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And Don't these, be concerned about it. They have experience is what well, I meant to say. And the way that these two programs can generate the kind of talent, as you mentioned, these two teams finished in the top 10 of rankings in Class 2A girls hockey last season. So this one skips over the Benilde line. Bit of a forecheck trying to force a Pony turnover. They'll skip out through neutral ice. Now moving in on a two-on-one. Here come the Ponies through the far circle, trying to center. It's not there. On top of it is Chaney, who throws it in on goal. And it's a save that time for Demetra Walsma. But, boy, Ponies might want to look to hit that two-on-one opportunity back. Yeah, interesting. Bryn Lasko's right out front. She took a check to the back as that puck went by. But uh, shot wide of the net. But the goaltender for Benilde St. Marcus was not willing to take a chance. Scoop that puck up as soon as she could. Face-off win, comes out to a pony right out in the slot. Ends up deflecting and cleared into the corner. Didn't get a hard shot, but not at all. It's just a dangerous, loose, bouncing puck. And ended up actually in behind the Red Knight goal. Puck is there again. 10-18 left in our first period. Red Knight striking first here on game number one of a new regular season for both of these teams. Nice effort holding into the zone that time by Andre Hackler. Uh, it ends up to Pasqua in the corner. Held in at the line there by Lang. Lang stick handles, works it into St. Martin in the corner. St. Martin looking for space in front. Lang had to find some space now. St. Martin tries to tuck it in on the glove side, but it was denied either by the post or Demetra Walsma. Another chance thrown out in front. That couldn't connect with the Pony as now the Red Knights having a hard time clearing their defensive zone and the pressure alive here from the Ponies. Yeah, they're putting a lot of pressure on. Benil's done a great job though of preventing the Stillwater from any getting any tic-tac-toe plays. The intelligence of St. Martin to know that's the set that she's facing decides to go for the wraparound. Smart move. Finn sends a shot in high, wraps all the way out to the line. Pony's able to hold it in. Finn in behind a goal, tries to flick it out in front, can't get it there. Then that time almost nearly found St. Martin. And Benil looks to stretch out in transition. And a centering pass there from Harris. Couldn't find a red knight. And now the Ponies come back three on two. St. Martin flicks it out to Finn. In Beautiful. the right circle, she scores! As dangerous as it gets on that top line. And it's Addie Finn who strikes first on the season for Stillwater. Yeah, one of the things that St. Martin's so good at is she doesn't come in the hard press. She she goes away from the defense, pass it to her teammate. Watch Finn go top left shelf here. Beautiful shot, right, right out of range. Goalie really has no chance at that. One to one. Addie Finn marks down as the first goal scorer on the new season for the Ponies. Certainly St. Martin will get an assist on that setup chance. Just it was kind of not a crazy pace of a pass or anything, just laid it onto Addie Finn and let Finn do the rest. So these Pony fans seeing what they're hoping to see a lot this season from that top line. And with 8.30 left in this first period, the Red Knights skate in offside. We're all tied up just like that. Ponies and Red Knights 
You're all tied up, and that goal coming right with nine minutes left in this first period here at the St. Croix Valley Rec Center. It's just a season ago. Addie Finn, 11 goals, 19 assists. That'll be assist number one on the season for St. Martin as well. Off a 51-point season for St. Martin, 23 goals and 28 assists. Consistency and danger all season long. As trailing out of the corner, Pony's trying to work it out in front. Nice defensive stick from a red knight. Got tangled up, still able to get away with it is Ellie Stewart. Stewart moves in and is knocked down by her teammate. Now the Ponies try and work it back here left to right. Back and forth action as Lang, far low circle, leaves it out to St. Martin, can't turn that one toward goal. Ends up back in behind the boards and behind the Benil, but a very open game, Don, here to start between these two good teams. Very open, and both teams doing a good job defensively. Brooke Nelson moves right in on the Benil goal and scores! Brooke Nelson found a puck on her stick and did the rest and moved right in on Walsma. Worked it around the Red Knight goaltender and it's 2-1 Stillwater. Here you can see her coming down the ice, just going left and right, just, just showing off that speed. I mean, she has that speed on the ice and she also has it on the soccer field. So he just said that. He had water with the Miss Soccer finalist. Now the Red Knights trying to force a turnover. Nearly got it right in front of the Timmons goal. But nonetheless. So Josie St. Martin on the assist there as well. Two quick points for St. Martin. And that top line again, Don. We've talked about them already a couple times. All over the scoring here early on. Yeah, and you know, the thing about St. Martin is she'll get a lot of assists because she knows how to do the right plays. If you try to defend those people she's passing to, she'll probably score on you. St. Martin moves in again on a long outstretched pass. Couldn't keep that puck on her stick. Great vision up ice though. Boy, what a pass that was from Josie Lang as the Red Knights move back in and a good defensive stick from Josie Lang took that opportunity away from Lizzie Hamill. Yeah, nice defensive move, and now the Ponies have turned this game around. Boy, Finn into St. Martin, fires on, and that's a save for Dimitra Walsma. Boy, there has been no stopping seven and 22 here so far. As Nelson comes up with a takeaway out of the corner. Nelson into the high slot, leaves it off there for Finn. Tails it all the way into the corner. One red knight there goes down. Physical game, no penalty so far, 6.25. Left in our first period, Finn and Nelson for the Ponies off to this strong start as that one just whistles wide of the Benil goal. Lang holds it in from the point and the offensive zone pressure, Don, very prevalent from the Ponies. Yeah, DeJarnette shot, shooting it at the net. And uh, I think you're gonna see the team encourage that. Take those shots. Kelly Gray sends it in deep there for the Red Knights. Kelly Panic and Kevin Gray's Knights can get a change. Stick at the line, Nicholson tried to be the first one to it as that one gets beyond Brooklyn Riley and beneath the goal line of the Red Knights. 5.45 left here, period number one. Been a fun start to this one, Ponies and Red Knights. As there was a collision right at the Benilde Red Line. Just the speed of this game, Don, early on more than anything than the physicality. Yeah, I thought physicality might be more of a uh, presence. It certainly was like on the opening uh, faceoff, but yeah, you're right. Lots of moving around the ice. Good job by both teams to really poke each other, poke the puck away from each other. And uh, we've seen a couple breakaways by Benilde St. Margaret. And then we see Brooke Nelson just slide through the defense and get a goal. Yeah, that's an individual effort of a goal as sharp as you will see as unable to connect there on a pass was Ellie Stewart looking for Sienna Carver. Down the far wall, moving in that time, Dylan Reardon, the sophomore, as it played off her stick. Pasqua trying to be the first to it out of the corner. And as Pasqua is able to come away with it, Stewart dumps it in near side. Approaching our final five minutes of this first period of a new regular season, 
as this one works its way all the way ahead. Now turning up ice into space. Here comes Kaylee Koopman, and Koopman gets a shot off and forces Timmons into a save, but there were enough ponies that recovered defensively. Right, nice job by Koopman too to go between two defenders there and get a shot on goal. Stewart, high point, sends it through. Traffic gets deflected in. That's Bailey Gray who was lingering around the Stillwater goal and with 4.36 left, it's Bailey Gray for the Red Knights that has us all tied back up. Yeah, Gray with the redirect and then went flying afterwards. So we'll take another look here, Don. That all started by Stewart. Yeah, Stewart and then afterwards, Gray gets tripped up but did a great job redirecting the puck. Basically making, those are basically impossible for a goaltender to stop. A redirect from Bailey Gray, who just a season goal only had four goals for the Red Knights. Here tonight, has got goal number one on the new season. We're all tied back up at two. St. Martin right off the Benil goal, fires that one in on Wamza and forces a save, then fires it in again just to deflect out into this area. And oh, then there's a loose puck that trickled in on goal. It has been a busy start for Dimitro Walsma in goal for the Red Knights. And covers up a, no, nearly covered up a loose puck. That puck was still free. All tied up at two apiece. Fun start to a new season. Hans Brussel, Don Ackerman with you here on VAC TV. Great to have you along with us. Our whole crew that do such a great job for us as well. Right into hockey season. Pretty remarkable. It's back already. Long shot from the point. Has to be denied out of the crease by Dimitra Walsma as it's worked back in nearby St. Martin. Sends it across to the far circle. Nelson, or no, that's Addy Finn that time ringing that one high. There is just a connection from this top line early on, Don, that's visible to see. Yeah, it doesn't look like the first game they played together because it's not. Oh, absolutely. These are players that we were talking about earlier, played a long time with each other. As this pony pressure in the offensive zone continues, ponies had it at the far wall. That was Addie Finn who gets it cleared away. Now Kendall Hassler tries to work it through neutral ice. Mickelson throws it back toward the Red Knight line. Duffy can't play it forward. And Mickelson comes right back with it. Can't get it away from Hackler for Stillwater, who looks to connect on the near half wall. A lot of goals early, but also a lot of breaking up going on here. They're not making it easy on one another tonight. And it feels like the Red Knights, eight shots on goal, but their big chances, Don, on those two goals, they've taken advantage of. Ponies haven't given them a lot more outside of that. Nope. No, you're absolutely right. And you're seeing, you know, the chances that, that's how important the chances are to take them take them when you get them. You get a chance to break away that you never know what that can turn into. So far, Stillwater's plays have been more of teamwork, but you also see that nice redirect on the tying goal from Gray, from Stewart and Koopman. So, I mean, it's this is we're gonna see everything tonight, I think. I'm excited, this is fun. Already a couple lead changes. That brief 2-1 Stillwater lead, that one Disappearing quick, found the leveler as well after Benil jumped out ahead early on. Back and forth action here, and really top-notch hockey to open up a new season. A good matchup between these two teams. Two programs that felt they may have left their seasons a little short just in the section playoffs. Certainly eyes and certainly hopes on maybe something even greater and further this year. Yeah, absolutely. You see Cashman wants to cash in on those three fret, those three familiar faces on the front line. It's going to be fun to watch. And Benilde St. Marcus also part of the mix. Heising from the high circle. Easy save there from Lily Timmons, who's not too bad to have that kind of experience back into your goal for the Ponies. No, we've got two great goaltenders here tonight, too. It's not going to be easy to win this game. Mitra Walsma just a season ago, seven wins and 2.8 goals against four losses and two shutouts in those seven wins. Lily Timmons, 16 and eight last year, just a goal against just over two and three shutouts. As this one shuffled out in front. Boy, that was a good look on goal right there from Kaylee Koopman, but Koopman couldn't turn it 
beyond Timmons. As Lang picks it up right at the center line. Lang backhands, throws it in front, skips all the way to the corner, and Finn just flicks it right back out in front of goal, and it ends up to a red knight with some space through neutral ice. That time turns it right back over to the ponies. Tried to find Book Nelson who has the puck now. Now they got a time there on sides. And then here come the three. Maddie Finn drops it off for St. Martin. You can just feel the energy and the excitement. It's just kind of, you see number seven enter with the zone entry. This whole building just holds their breath as Nelson fires in a good shot. That forces a blocker save to Walsma. And then Walsma will cover up just inside our final 60 seconds of this first period. Yeah, they know they have something special here. And they're hoping that it turns into something extra special by the end of the season. Keep that consistency and the familiarity with each player's styles, how they dash to the net, maybe even some like different skating moves as well. Don, you talked about that. That is what comes with that familiarity and playing for so long together. Yeah, I think the key the key will be to see if everybody can like play off of the defense instead of play into the defense. To me, that's going to be the difference for Stillwater. All right, off a face off. Scrum right out of the corners. The Red Knights able to try and send it down the near wall. Boy, the Knights' defensive zone exits have just not been sharp. It's just been a pony on top of the puck nearly every time, as this time they're able to stretch it finally out of the Stillwater zone. And now here they move in with a two-on-one. High circle chance throws it in on Timmons, who's able to cover up on that look on goal from Taylor Hansen, a goal scorer tonight. Yeah, Hansen coming in, that freshman, looking pretty solid, taking a shot. Timmons covered it, but then kind of lifted and covered it again. Got to be careful doing that, because if you do, these Red Knights will poke at it, try to put it in the net. Two goals apiece here early on. As well, the faceoff inside of the Stillwater zone. Benilde win that draw. Here early on for the Red Knights, final 17 seconds. Pony's trying to work it up quickly with Finn as Finn sends it across for Nelson. Nelson to the forehand. Good block to take that pass out of the center of the circle. Final seconds. Now down to seven as that one's thrown in behind a goal. Nelson chases out of the corner. Final three seconds from the far circle. And Nelson just sends one behind in open number seven to this near side circle. But 2-2, two, two. and we can catch our breath here after the end of our first period, Don. Back and forth, very open game early on between the Red Knights and the Ponies, and no penalties. No penalties, both teams have led, both teams have trailed. So 2-2 two, two after our first period of action, Hansen and Gray for the Red Knights, Finn and Nelson, that top line already making some noise for the Ponies after one period into a new season. It's Stillwater 2, Benilde St. Margaret's 2, and we'll step aside for a quick break. It's Pony Hockey here on Back TV. Got the charcoal? Uh-oh. We're out of charcoal. What? Well, then what are we gonna eat? Don't worry, I got you covered. Hello. Wow, that was quick. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, have a good night. You too. Hey guys, Papa John's. Nice. Oh, yummy. How'd you know? I always do. One. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by tennis ball. My ex owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. But the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. 
Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. Ponies and Red Knights in a fun one here after our first period of a new season, all tied up at two apiece at the St. Croix Valley Rec Center. Hans Bristol, Don Ackerman back with you here on VAC TV. Boy, Don, that was as exciting and as high-paced of a first period as we could have asked of to start a new season. Yeah, absolutely. Shots on goal are tied at 11. We've seen both teams have the lead. Both teams have been down. It's been a good fight so far, and there's lots to work on. Especially you see the defensively, they need to, you know, get that together. It's going to be fun to watch the second period. And it really stood out the Ponies' time in their offensive zone. But, of course, you do have to go and open the goals. It was the Red Knights, Don, that struck first. But the Ponies had an answer. They did. They did. And it was, it was teamwork as well as individual effort on these goals. Yes, there was... you can see that great pass from St. Martin to to Nelson and then this goal is Brooke Nelson just all by herself running through, skating through. She knows how to put the puck in the net and she does. And then here's a great, great redirect by Gray who chips it into the net and then flies afterwards as the defender pushes onto her but it's too late, goals and, in the net. And you talked about it, the shots on goal 11 apiece that feels about how pretty even of an opening period that was. Yeah, you couldn't really have much more of a no even keeled both ways. It feels right to be tied. Both teams done a great job, and the goaltenders have kept a lot of other pucks out of the net, but, you know, you, there is quality goaltending here, even though it's 2-2. Two to two. Well, and those goaltenders both bring back experience. We talked about it before. It's a Stillwater team. There's going to be some new names, but you said it right there on the Brooke Nelson and Addie Finn's goal. That's going to be the key line to be a really offensive powerhouse throughout the season. Yeah, and we're still waiting to see Lang get some goals, too. That's uh, That was one of the top three goal scorers last year, point getters last year. So it'll be fun to see her get involved. They tried to get her involved on one play. Defensively was stopped. And it's going to be interesting to see how do they adjust to that because both teams probably are not happy with this tie. They'd rather have the lead. Now 2-2, two, two, still plenty of exciting action coming up here for you from the rec center. Great to have hockey back at the end of one. It's Stillwater 2, but it's St. Margaret's 2. We'll be right back for the second period next here on VAC TV. Stay with us. Well, it looks like John's trying to make dinner again. Got the ketchup and mustard? Yep. Got the relish? Yep. Hot dogs and buns? Yep. Got the charcoal? Uh-oh. We're out of charcoal. What? Well then, what are we gonna eat? Don't worry, I got you covered. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, have a good night. You too. Hey guys, Papa John's. Thanks. Oh, yummy. How'd you know? I always do. The opportunities that our students have to learn and grow on a daily basis through all of our physical education and health courses is second to none. We're very fortunate and we're thankful to be able to take advantage of all the learning opportunities that we get to create and share with our students. For personal and community health, we hit all the national standards, including the mental health standard. We as a department uh, think it's important to try to eliminate the stigma attached to mental health and we do a lot of different activities and learn
learning that will help empower students to help themselves and to help other people. It's really important to teach our students the necessary decision-making skills regarding alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs. We also have people come in from a program called Know the Truth. They have graduated from a rehabilitation facility to overcome their substance abuse disorder. Our sexual health unit focuses on communication and respect both for ourselves and for others. Students really reflect on their personal values and their viewpoints to make healthy decisions surrounding their sexual health. In nutrition, our students will learn to develop the knowledge and skills that will be needed to help them to make healthy food and beverage choices throughout their lives. The primary purpose of the American Red Cross First Aid CPR and AED training is to help students recognize and respond appropriately to cardiac, breathing, and first aid emergencies. All students will have the opportunity to be certified if they desire. The goal of our Fitness for Life class is to encourage students to develop and maintain a health enhancing level of fitness, along with discovering activities they may want to do and continue to do once they graduate from high school. Our weight training course is designed to help students develop basic and advanced weight training techniques and to understand those concepts to allow for fitness and health growth and development. Students will take ownership through SMART goals by developing their own SMART goals. It's individualizing and taking ownership of their learning. Unified PE is a unique opportunity for students with varying abilities, backgrounds to come together. We focus on the physical, intellectual, and social growth of all students in physical education. Special Olympics and our own Ponies Trust Club support this class with fun activities, field trips, they offer collaboration with other unified schools and so much more. Team sports is a really good class we have here at Stillwater High School. It is designed for anybody that likes to compete and uh, you don't necessarily have to be a varsity athlete to be in this class. And there's a little bit of something for everybody in team sports. Our personal fitness and sport class is a great opportunity for students to explore how they can incorporate exercise into their daily practice for a lifetime. We also encourage proper nutrition, hydration, and sleep habits throughout our semester so that they can take these beyond just our classroom. As FIED and health teachers here at Stillwater High School, we help our students make connections between our courses and their everyday lives now and in the future. Fun is the name of the game at the Lumberjack. Throw some axes, enjoy Union Alley, sit back, relax, take in the excellent food and drinks. The next time you are out and about in beautiful downtown Stillwater, visit Sarah and the great staff for a fun night out. Visit the Lumberjack off Commercial Street in downtown Stillwater today for a glass full of fun. Cheers. Community Ed serves a great purpose in our community and helps keep families connected. Community education has something for everyone. I really love watching the kids improve. Come and see us at Community Ed for a good time for kids and families. Preserve those local events that last a lifetime. Visit the VAC TV store on your computer or mobile device to purchase school programs and community events. DVD, Blu-ray, and digital downloads are available. Make it easy and search for your program that you wish to purchase. Buying is convenient with multiple options at your disposal while checking out. Visit vactv.org slash store today. Community Ed serves a great purpose in our community and helps keep families connected. Community education has something for everyone. I really love watching the kids improve. Come and see us at Community Ed for a good time for kids and families. My name is Stephen Gordy and I'm the building principal at Lake Elmo Elementary School. The school actually opened here over a hundred years ago. Part of what really makes Lake Elmo strong is the community involvement that we get. And again, if you look at research around elementary schools, 
and you start to measure what makes a healthy elementary school, that community involvement, specifically parents and guardians who are heavily involved, um, is really a strong sign of a, a really robust program. And we're very fortunate to have that kind of support, and our immersion program reflects that as well. So we're in our second year of the development of our immersion program. Our goal is to have K all the way through fifth grade. We have uh, a large Hispanic population in the area, and our goal is to see a third to a half of our students be native Spanish speakers. Again, going back to that learning about as you learn among, when you have native Spanish speakers and English speakers, that learning is accelerated. We also are the cluster site for medically complex students. Um, many of them come to school in wheelchair, walker, other assisted devices. That and integration in into our program also creates compassion and empathy among our students. And those are life skills that kids have a, a chance to develop. When we talk about the strengths of Lake Elmo, um, the word community always comes up. And really what we're talking about is the connections, right? And those connections center around relationships, student to student, student to teacher, home to school. That's when you start to feel that sense of community. And we take great pride in the relationships that we develop. Period number two here from the St. Croix Valley Rec Center in Stillwater. The Ponies and Red Knights off to a fun one here tonight to open a new girls high school hockey season. 2-2 two -two apiece as we head into period number two. Hans Bristol, Don Ackerman back with you here. And Don, we just got a little bit of everything in that first period. Great individual effort goals, some good goaltending. Uh, no penalties, no power plays to be exact. They're out of period number one. Well, nonetheless, I, a fun start. Pretty clean game, actually, when you when you talk about it in that regard. No penalties, no cheap shots, no none of that kind of thing going on, which is kind of nice. I you kind of like to not see penalties if you can. We've had a couple icings back and forth, so yeah, it's been a pretty even matched game. Well, we mentioned it earlier, just a one goal game between these two teams and their only matchup last season it was a three one lead that Benil took late into that game. Ponies battled their way back, but. Manhild got that win, and here tonight, all tied up into period number two in game number one of a new season for both of these sides. Underway with a Stony Snowwater Pony face-off win. Great to be back here inside of the rec center. This hockey season just getting started as Finn comes up with an interception right at center ice, takes some contact right away at the Stillwater line, and a bit slow to get up as Nelson fires one wide. Despite the no penalties, Don, there's been a physical aspect to this game as the Benil St. Margaret move in on goal, and that's a good save on that chance there from Zakarjak. And a big stop there from Lily Timmons. Yeah, that's what it's going to take. You know, good goaltending is probably going to be the difference in this game. Then sends this one just to be dumped in behind a goal for the Ponies. St. Martin throws it back and pressured right off the wall. Pasqua. Comes away with it for the Red Knights. Like those no penalties, Don. There has been a physical aspect to this game. A lot of it's just been these players making efforts to get to the puck and unintentional contact, really. Yeah, I think the uh, exception to that might have been that last uh, hit on Finn. Ooh, there you go. March is banging for that, banging her stick. She wants to. She wants to get a shot out high. Off, had it in the corner, and March does eventually move in. It got denied. Maybe a blocker in front of goal before it made it to the stick side of Walsma. And now that one deflected in front. Ooh, couldn't corral that in. And a loose puck. The Red Knights get that one away. Those rebounds, you know, the juicy rebounds, that's going to be the big difference, I think. If the goaltender that doesn't give those up. There's been one already that, that uh, off Timmons that was put in the net. Other than that, we haven't seen too many opportunities. Fine, Dimitro Walsma. Just kind of a high shot, just couldn't quite pull that one in, and we will have a face off. There's a look at Timmons, nine saves in this one so far. As we said earlier, coming off a 16 win season in goal for the Ponies. Face off win here for the Red Knights. They're working out of their own defensive zone. Will I have any Cashman joining us upcoming in their second intermission. Interesting to get 
her thoughts out of what will be an opening two periods to a brand new season and Annie's just her second year in charge, very involved in Stillwater hockey in this community and as we said earlier, kind of started off our broadcast on a lot of excitement and energy was just springing out of that head coach. Yeah, it would be exciting to see her talk. I really appreciate her coming to talk to us too. Hamill sends a stretch pass just out of the reach of Duffy who trailed down that far wall for the Red Knights. Ends up out of the corner. Nelson plays it ahead. St. Martin has it played off her stick. Comes out to the high slot. Will spin around with it just outside the far circle. And it's chased down in the near corner. Inside of her opening minutes of this second period, 14-21. All tied up at two. Two Ooh. goals apiece in the first. No penalties here so far. Almost thought maybe that Lang would pick one up there. St. Martin uses her speed, gets to a puck first in behind the Benil goal. Takes it out inside of here to the near circle. St. Martin leaves it off for March. Sends it across the zone into that far side corner. Chaney able to hold the zone as Chaney sends in a long drive. That hit off of an old St. Margaret player high, and Brooke Nelson couldn't jump on that rebound. Really nice rebound, too, if you can get that going off a player. It's an unexpected change of direction. Nelson couldn't get it, and now there's our first penalty with St. Martin being tripped. Right on cue, it was St. Martin who went down just outside of the neutral zone, and it is going to be a red knight to the penalty box for our first penalty of this contest here in the second period. I believe it looked like it was Ella Pasqua. Yep. Who will head into the penalty box and a power play opportunity. Interesting enough, I don't say Margaret's power play last year went 0 for 6 against the Stillwater Pony penalty kill. Now it's the Pony's power play. So a tripping there from Pasqua has the Ponies on their first power play of a new season. And quickly, the penalty kill of the Red Knights, not the Golden Knights, they're in the NHL. The Red Knights. Lots of Knights, good Ab night. Absolutely. Finn collects it right at the line. Inside to 30 seconds into this new power play. Boy, Finn. That one took a weird bounce, deflected hard off of Addie Morris and cleared the zone. And Morris didn't have to do a lot there, just stand in the way of a pass. Knights pick it up on the kill, but just leave it on to the far half wall. Got another pony down inside of neutral ice, and an icing is going to be slowing down the momentum of this pony power play with a minute 08 left, 12.46 left in the second period. Yeah, that player down on the ice was Addie Finn and uh, interesting to have an icing on a power play. Probably something the special teams coaching staff not gonna be too pleased with in their first power play try of the season. Get into the special team situation and just as good as one team's power play can be, one team's penalty kill can just be as strong as well and that is the case for these two teams. Boy, couldn't clear the zone. It deflected off of St. Martin, nearly around Josie's helmet area. St. Martin uses some speed, skips into the circle. Ooh, tried to get a feed back there from Nelson, but it was deflected wide. Finn has it near circle. Tries to send it across for Nelson. Stick handles through the slot. And that one stripped away, and the Red Knights do get a clear. But a better look in setting up that power play try there from the Ponies. Yeah, Nelson and St. Martin were kind of in the same line of sight for the pass, and I think that caused the problem there. 12.05 to go, second period, all tied up two apiece. Stillwater and Benilde St. Margaret's. These teams very strong regular seasons last year. And Stillwater finishing atop of the Suburban East Conference. Lang feeds it into the middle. St. Martin blocked right in front by a Red Knight. Boy, taking the brunt of that was Lulu Rasinski for the Red Knights as March comes away with it. Final two seconds of the power play. St. Martin can't get a shot off. Finn oh. on a rebound and had a wide open look at goal. I do believe it was Josie Lang and Pasqua out of the penalty box moves in for the Red oh. Knights and scores. All sorts of ice jumping right out of the penalty box and Pasqua was in all alone and has the Red Knights out in front. The awareness of Pasqua to jump out of the penalty box, Don, as we take another look. 
Key there was her teammate, just knowing to chip it forward. Great play here, just goes five hole. Not a lot the Ponies could have trailed back and done defensively there, nonetheless. It is a 3-2 Benilts. St. Margaret lead. Ella Pasqua jumping out of the penalty box after. 23 on the assist. Filling out a, it's gonna be Hamill's second point of this contest. And just like that, the Red Knights jumping back out in front and a bit of adversity for these ponies in game number one. Yes, sir, but really good awareness there by Hamill to know to chip it forward. Pasqua Ooh. leaves the shot off from the top of the circle and firing it home for the Red Knights. That was Kendall Hassler all over that wrister and it went top corner beyond Timmons and it's a two goal lead here for the Red Knights. We'll get another look at it here. Just a beautiful wrister, unbelievable. Oh, it was a three on two situation that the Red Knights moved in and Stillwater and Annie Cashman going to take a timeout as the Benilde St. Margaret's Red Knights have struck for two and a two goal lead now in this second period. So it's Kendall Hassler who was on the end of that finish, the junior has the goal here for the Red Knights and all of a sudden, Don, just a bit shaky here from Stillwaters, these two quick goals. Maybe not a lot you can do about Pasqua jumping out of the box, but there was all sorts of space for Benilde St. Margaret to attack the zone in a three on two zone entry. Yeah, and Pasqua's got quite the little, uh, some kind of weird hat trick going. We have to find a name for it where you get a penalty, a goal, and an assist. How about that? In the same period. Oh. Oddly enough, we see the uh, advantage of the power play not paying off. So that's absolutely right. The Ponies couldn't convert on their power, first power play chance of this game. Take a timeout. Andy Cashman talking things over with her side down by two here with 10.51 to go in this second period. How about two shots on goal this period? Two goals for the Red Knights. Two for two. There is another look at the goal from Kendall Hassler, the junior for Benilde. St. Margaret coming off an 11 goal, 13 assist season last year for Benilde. And right off the face off, the Red Knights go right back in on the Stillwater goal. And this time, boy, Timmons has to cover up, but that was right off the face off. Yeah, I think when Timmons covered that up, I don't think she actually had it when they blew the whistle. I think it was in front of her, but I do not think she had it covered. A little bit of a break there for Benilde St. Margaret who come in and just you know storm the gates if you will. It was Ella Pasqua they gave an assist to who was moving in on that big opportunity into the zone entry for the Red Knights. And Hassel was there to finish off. That one deflected again in front. That time it was Grace Benedictson. who's right on top of a what's been a busy second period for Lily Timmons so far. Yeah, and you're seeing the, the captain, Lang, Rough up the no player a little bit there. They want to get more physical here. They don't like all this open movement that's going on. Face off will be to the stick side of Timmons in goal. Shove below the goal line. Red Knights there first to it with Haley Koopman able to be in charge. And now it comes free to St. Martin who moves into the Benilde zone and St. Martin is taken down and it'll be another penalty on the way. Trying to shovel it in. Out behind of goal is Brooke Nelson. And the extra skater advantage doesn't stay alive for long as Timmons was flying out of their goal. But that's St. Martin just being a playmaker and pulled down for the penalty. Was trying to make a play. You know, she's very dangerous. Everybody knows it. I guess you'd rather give up a penalty than give up a goal. And that's what the decision they made is. Number five is going into the box. That would be Lulu Rusinski headed to the penalty box for the Red Knights. And St. Martin was the one who generated that play. And these fans here inside the Valley Rec Center now a power play opportunity for the Stillwater Ponies. And one of our officials just having a quick word with Annie Cashman before we drop in a faceoff. That's a potential question for your intermission. There we go.
So second power play chance in this one, 0 for 1 so far. Lane comes away with it on the near post, sends it into the half walls. Finn rattles that one and it goes high and clears off the boards and down inside the Stillwater zone. Lang skating it down. There's Rusinski with the checking penalty that has the Ponies back on the power play after St. Martin was brought down. St. Martin tries to leave it off for Nelson, comes out free into the near side corner. St. Martin, far circle, Oof. fires and scores! On the power play, it's Josie St. Martin with a first tally on the young season. She saw an opening and took it, that's what she'll do. No problem for number seven in that kind of space with that kind of time to fire and score and the Ponies back within one as we take another look. Oh, we're gonna get the extended replay here. We're going down the ice. Lang's gonna chase it down. This one kicks it forward to St. Martin who runs across the ice. Unassisted, as they did call. She picks up the loose puck, comes around, just kind of zeroes in, finds an opening, takes her left side. You gotta give the credit to the Ponies for taking that timeout. Benilde struck quick with those two goals. They got the power play chance, and St. Martin, their playmaker, made a big play. Yep, that's what she's gonna do. If you guard her, you have to watch out for who she's gonna pass it to. Either way, you're gonna pay. Three-point night already for Josie St. Martin. Two assists and the goal that time. With 9.07 left in this second period, already piling on to what is a plus 100 career, 176 points in the career of Josie St. Martin, the future Ohio State Buckeye. Has a Stillwater Pony, but this time Pasqua with a shot to the far circle and moved right in on Timmons, and Timmons comes up with a save as that's now 16 shots on goal, 12 saves for Lily Timmons, and a big one there from a dangerous Pasqua with space in that far circle. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, St. Martin's going to go to Ohio State. Kind of appropriate because one of their chances, O-H, and she's someone who makes you say O. Oh, that's for sure. There's no doubt about that. Of course, at the USA hockey level as well, and having a third call up to the under-18. What an achievement and an accomplishment that is to St. Martin's skill set. So one goal, Benilde St. Margaret lead on the power play. Two chances tonight. St. Martin strikes on power play number two here for the Ponies. As this one comes all the way out to a line. Shot into traffic there from Rusinski. Goes out to the far boards and gets just taken away. And Benilde St. Margaret will reset back into their attacking zone. Instead it turns into a turnover that DeJarnett moved in. But the official says offside to put us at a pause with 8-11 to go in the second period and a 4-3 Benilde St. Margaret lead. Yeah, Janarnett had seven points last year, one goal, six assists. I expect to see more goals out of Janarnett this year for sure based on what I've seen so far. Those top lines are always so critical, but it really can go back to your depth, can go back to what are some of those bottom lines behind you and what are they able to give you on a nightly basis is it will be covering up there for Demetra Walsma. And this early on in the season, that could be the kind of questions that Stillwater coaching staff, Fanny Cashman, are looking to improve on and looking to see what they have in those bottom lines. Sure, I, I mean, they've been working together this summer, practicing, getting ready, and uh, now you want to see the results from all that work. Right now, just focused on a one-goal deficit with eight minutes to go in our second period. Hans Bristol, Don Ackerman with you here from the St. Croix Valley Rec Center, our entire back TV crew. Great to have Pony Hockey back here for you as Finn worked her way into some space in this near side circle. St. Martin, the nice effort. She couldn't really connect on that one, but it's fun to watch her put skate to stick with the puck. It's just amazing to see when you think about but she, that she's also an excellent soccer player. Absolutely. It's a really strong soccer program. It's always have Strong season, and boy, but there was a whistle there as Benilde almost moved in two on one into the Stillwater zone. Just trying to think about the different physicality of you know being able to play this, you know, your skate to your puck. There's a there's a soccer esque move to it, but then at the same point, you don't have a stick when you're playing soccer, so you don't have anything to kick it to, right? So it's fun to see that different. It's just a completely different concept, but she's executing on both sides really well. And it goes back to the just the overall skill set of these athletes. 
and what they're able to do from season to season. That's the great part of high school sports. You get these multi-sport athletes. So much athleticism and skills. As oh. Alexa March came in, boy, that's going to be a penalty as a Red Knight got around Alexa March and kind of whether she meant to do it or not, just got to stick up a little high on a Red Knight and Vanille with Miss St. Margaret's will head to the power play. Yeah, March looked like she almost like clothesliner. Yeah, they're calling the high stick there. So it will be Benilde St. Margaret to the power play for the first time. And Alexa March, the senior, to the penalty box here for the Ponies. So a high stick to Alexa March, and we will see this penalty kill have a really important moment in this game, Don, halfway through the second period at down a goal. Yeah, big, big deal for BSM who wants to extend their lead. And that's something Stillwater really doesn't want to do after putting up a good fight. They do not want to go down two again. Good early start here from the Ponies penalty kill. 30 seconds into an Alexa March high stick. That has the Red Knights here on the power play. Stewart through neutral ice. Ends up out to the far half wall. Now up to the slot. Sent out to the point. Rusinski plays it near circle. It's Hassler looking for that shot on goal. It's a save moving in on her own rebound and scores. Boy, put that initial shot in and on the power play. The Red Knight strike and it's back out to a two goal Benilde St. Margaret lead. Yeah, she, you know, just too easy. Hassler was able to find that puck quicker than anyone else and just puts it to the left side of Lily Timmons. And it felt like that was a loose puck right on goals. We take another look. And just dives in, sells out completely to get that shot on the left side. Her body goes in on the right side. Great job miss with misdirection, redirection, and taking advantage of a rebound. That's goal number two on the night for Kendall Hassler. Coming off an 11 goal season just a year ago, the junior, a two goal game. And so 5 3, the new lead for Benilde St. Margaret with just coming up inside our final five minutes of this second period and once again, Ponies find themselves and here's another move in on Timmons and a big pad save and a good stop for Tillmans denying that opportunity to Lulu Rasinski. As Timmons continues to be busy in goals, this one comes out to the point that slides all the way through, reflected behind the Stillwater goal. Backhanded into the middle, comes out to the near circle and it's Shoveled back in, and now this is the kind of Red Knights pressure, Don. We saw the Ponies be able to execute in that first period. Here's a dangerous loose puck, but Timmons able to close up on that glove side. Good defense there by the Ponies to get in the middle and break that, break up the passing. They're going to have to make sure that they clear the zone in front of their goalie so that they don't get a free chance out there because if Timmons is going to give up rebounds, that's probably going to mean goals. With, Margaret, with the Red Knights sitting out front. Well, and the shots on goal this period, 10 to two, it, favoring the Red Knights. It sure, it does look that way, doesn't it? Absolutely. So on the power play, it's goal number two on the night for the junior, Kendall Hassler. It's got the Red Knights out in front here, 5-3. 4.50 left in our second period here from the St. Croix Valley Rec Center. And game number one of a new season for these two teams as Finn skates in with speed. Finn dragged down, headed into the Benilde St. Margaret goal. And we're going to get a whistle and, well, no penalties in that first period. We will have a third Red Knight period, uh, third Red Knight penalty on the way here. Yeah, four in this period, and I guess we've seen it picked up. Definitely a deserved play there as Finn goes down into the net. Watching that, I was hoping to make sure there weren't any injuries there. Bodies flying around can sometimes cause that to happen, so luckily she's up and ready and gonna take the face off. It's Brooklyn Riley, the junior, into the penalty box here for the Red Knights, and the Ponies one for two on the power play. Quickly get a look on goal on a loose puck. Nelson trying to jab away at it, does not get beyond 
the strong effort of Walsma in goal for the Red Knights. As the power play continues, here's Finn over to March. That one into traffic and still loose and cleared away. Cleared away, but not out of the zone. Laying into the middle, St. Martin from the high slot. That one comes up into the padding of Walsma and a stop and just a little bit of contact there after that whistle. And uh, Nelson causing such a ruckus that now you're seeing some her pay for that. She ends up hitting the ice. These two goals of this game have come on the power play. St. Martin had that power play goal. And I think we are going to have someone else. We may have a coincidental minors, coincidental penalties to that would have been Finn and Bailey Gray. So we will see coincidental minors called there, and it will stay a five on four for the Red Knights. Well, after a pretty clean first period, I think this uh, physicality and the change in that has caused the referees to change how they want to legislate this game. So it'll stay a minute 31 left on this Stillwater power play. Uh, St. Martin's wins the draw. Coming away with it are the Ponies. Lang connects up with March. High circle, feeds it in towards St. Martin. That gets cleared away. Trying to keep it on top of the slot was charred, but this one ends up all the way back down to Lily Timmons for a kill clearance for Benilde St. Margaret's. Yeah, and they just cycled players, so we don't have any change of who's on the ice. 3.45 left in this second period. Stillwater three, Benilde St. Margaret's five. And it's got all sorts of entertainment out of that first period. More goals that we have seen here in period number two. 3.30 left here in the second. More good job and in efforts. Not too many chances continue to, to grow here for the Ponies on this power play. 37 seconds left, the extra skater advantage. St. Martin, far circle, tries to get it across. Ends up just off the stick that type of Josie Lang. This one yet again gets away from Lang and a really strong kill here from the Red Knights. Yeah, Lang just couldn't get the right angle with their teammate St. Martin and uh, now Benilde St. Margaret is able to get it cleared out of the zone. 2.55 left in this second period and it was Stillwater Skating in off sides, that's Audrey Hackler, the ninth grader. Moved in too quickly, 14 seconds left on the Riley roughing two minute minor. 2.55 left to go in this second period. Neutral zone draw gets sent back into the Stillwater zone. Pasqua first there to it for the Red Knights. Goes to the, goes to the far half wall, doesn't get beyond Koopman. Koopman pins it there, and a back to full strength as Riley comes out of the penalty box here for the Red Knights. So the Ponies unable to take advantage of that power play. 2.30 to go. There's a blast from the center red line that ran right into a Pony sweater. Pasqua comes away with it on the near circle. 2.20 left in our second period. Benilde St. Margaret's here in period number two of strike three times. Hassler with two of those. Once on the power play and have this 5-3 lead. Headed into our final seconds of our second period of action here from the rec center in Stillwater. There's some contact that's going to put the Ponies back to the power play. It looks like maybe off balance, just too much there from Sienna Duffy. And right back to the power play go the Ponies. Minute 58 left in this second period. The power play chance number four here in this one for Stillwater. That'll close out this period on the power play until unless Stillwater scores. St. Martin moves in on the near circle. So it is Sienna Duffy into the penalty box for the Red Knights. And like you said, Don, there's about a two second difference in the power play and our final moments of this second period feels like a really big spot for the Ponies to try and find a goal, get some momentum into the third. For sure, they'd love to get a goal here. Three to five, they need to cut that deficit. Finn skates in deep on this near side wall, brings it all the way out to March. Goes back to Addie Finn at the far point. 
March right on the blue line. Feeds it back over to Finn from the high circle. St. Martin collects in the slot. There's a save from Walsma. Loose puck in the air. Walsma sprawling and is laying on top of the puck. There have been a couple of loose pucks, but that is as good as we have seen from Demetra Walsma tonight. Yeah, just completely laid out for it. And uh, man, an aggressive play by Gray there to keep I think Lang from getting a good good from getting into the into that crease area and causing problems. I mean Walsma was just a in a full on extending everything mode as St. Martin rattles one off of Walsma's glove and goes wide. With 104 left in the second period, Ponies on the power play. As Lang sends that one through off of an old St. Margaret blocker. Final 55 seconds here of period number two. St. Martin. Out of the corner, chases out of the circle, sends it high for Finn, who loses the handle of it. It's going to be a breakaway for the Red Knights. It's Tala Hansen moving in, and Hansen moves in and scores. Short-handed, it's going to be the Red Knights to take a three-goal lead with 40 seconds left in this second period. Wow. Short-handed goal. And a great effort there by number 18, Tala Hansen. Hansen just ended up with that puck all alone, Don, for the goal. Yep, stick move and then went five hole. 6-3, the Red Knights with a turnover that turned into that chance. That's goal number two on the night for Tala Hansen, who opened the scoring in that first period. As Laska sends that one wide off the side of the netting. Final 20 seconds of this second period in Tala Hansen, their second goal of the night. Hansen, the ninth grader with a two goal game to open the season. Final 10 seconds, Ponies carry in on the near wall. Up out of the corner, takes it all the way far circle, a big blast and that one just deflects wide in a final second. We'll tick off the clock and a short handed goal on certainly not how the Ponies Wanted to see this second period come to a close as the Red Knights strike for four and a three goal lead. Yeah, and that's the second time one of the Benilde St. Margaret players has gotten the puck at the blue line and then taken off with it. Something definitely to work on um, for this third period and in this season. You do not want to give those kind of plays up. Three goal lead for Benilde St. Margaret as we will step aside here from the St. Croix Valley Red Center. The Red Knights in control after two. It's Stillwater three. But don't say Margaret six. We'll be right back here on VAC TV. Stay with us. Well, it looks like John's trying to make dinner again. Got the ketchup and mustard? Yep. Got the relish? Yep. Hot dogs and buns? Yep. Got the charcoal? <sighs> uh oh. We're out of charcoal. What? Well then, what are we gonna eat? Don't worry, I got you covered. Okay. How, how? 30 seconds, okay. You want us on camera? Yep. I assume so. Hello. Wow, well, that was quick. Yep, thank you very much. Thank you, have a good night. You too. That's the kind of period I wanted to have happen with the coach coming up to say hi. Hey guys, Papa John's. Thanks. Oh, yummy. How'd you know? I always do. girls pony hockey season tonight at the St. Croix Valley Rec Center. It's been a fun one after two periods. Stillwater three, Benilde St. Margaret's six. And 
Don, the Red Knights couldn't be slowed down there in that period number two. No, they scored uh, They scored on the power play and they scored shorthanded. Three power play chances for, for the Stub Ponies and able to connect on one of them, but man, the Red Knights are coming on strong and Walsma is earning the first syllable, Wall, looking like a solid player. Absolutely, there were some loose pucks, some chances right around the Benilde St. Margaret crease that that Stillwater just couldn't jump on top of. And of course, with a penalty-free first period, then we saw plenty of those there in period number two. Yeah, it really did change. We saw a big change there. I think the biggest thing that Stillwater had that Walsma didn't have is Timmons had some rebounds, Walsma did not. Yeah, Kendall Hassler, two of those goals in, this, in that second period for the Red Knight St. Martin struck on the power play. It opened, though, with Pasqua on full strength, Hansen wrapped that out, and you know they took the timeout. Josie St. Martin got that goal back. It felt like the Ponies had settled themselves into this game a little bit. The Red Knights just never let up. No, and then the Red Knights have made a made an impact too by putting St. Martin and Finn to the ground, earning penalties. But at the same point, I think they're sending a message. Yeah, the Stillwater Ponies with just the one goal on the four power play chances that they have had in total, and. A three goal lead feels hefty, but you gotta believe the message headed into the third period will be to just find that first one, find that second one headed into the third. Yeah, I like your idea of pretending like it's tied and going from there, trying to build on that. You definitely do have a three goal deficit. That is a massive deficit, but you're not gonna think of it that way. Get one at a time, keep working, keep chipping, and try to figure out how you're gonna come around and get back into this game. Yeah, some turnovers, the quick goal, Pasqua jumping right out of the penalty box. It's just been those moments that the Red Knights have been able to take advantage of here at the St. Croix Rec Center. As we will step aside, we'll have the third period coming around the corner here for you at Stillwater. Look for a comeback tonight. After two, it's Stillwater three, but Old St. Margaret six. We'll be right back. Pony Hockey here on VAC TV. Jordan, we, we 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 didn't see the goals on this screen here during that intermission, so we, we just kept chatting. But that's all right, no problem. We should. I, I just glanced over and didn't see anything, so and well, we just kept going. If we're gonna play off the TV, we got to figure out how we're gonna see the TV. Like it's behind me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if there was another, if there was a. Re you know, a monitor there yeah. on, on the camera, we could play off that, but otherwise I have no idea what's going yeah, on behind me. I was kind of trying to duck over your shoulder and see if it would come up, but that's all right. Uh, right, I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, I might have, if Annie comes up, I might have her stand here. I'll take your headset. Like GPA isn't really the best, so I thought I could try for an athletic scholarship. Maybe you should go talk to a coach about that. Good idea. I'll do that. Hmm. No. No. Yeah, that's not gonna work. I love the effort, Tori, but you should probably go see the College and Career Center. So sports scholarships really aren't looking too hot for me. What are my other options? It's a good thing you got other options. So there are scholarships that are merit-based, and uh, that's going to depend on your academics. So ACT score, transcript, you're going to want to check into your college just to see 
um, what those merit-based scholarships are and that you qualify for those. And then there's also a community scholarship. It's just for Stillwater seniors. And they have offered over 90 scholarships given to Stillwater students. They give over $400,000. And the process to apply is you fill out an application. You have to have two letters or recommendation, one from a teacher and one from a community member. You also have to write a personal statement. And then you want to make sure you look at the criteria of each scholarship to make sure you qualify for that. Scholarships will open up in October and they are due in February. Okay, so where do I get started? What you want to do is check out the high school website and all the instructions are there. I'm Andy Fields, I'm the principal of Oakland Middle School. So Oakland is on the southern part of the school district. We support students that come to us from Brookview, uh, Afton Lakeland, Anderson Elementary School, and Lake Elmo Elementary School. We have taken a school of, of 950 students and broken it into smaller, uh, more manageable numbers of students to staff. There is nothing more important in education than the relationship between the teacher and the student. And at this building, I think that that's what's done very well. We have the best teachers. Um, and, and I see that in the classroom observations that I do on a daily basis. The relationships are authentic, they're sincere, and our students have people that they can talk to during the day, not just about the algebra problems that they're working through, but about things that are happening in their life. And I, I believe that that happens when the teacher shows an interest and a care in the student. And that's something that I'm really proud of. Many of the teachers that, that are here uh, have graduated from Stillwater Area High School and have also attended Oakland Junior High when it was the Junior High. So one of the reasons uh, why we moved from Junior High to Middle School is to really focus more on the whole child. That we know that our students that are adolescent need to have experiences that, that prepare them not just academically but social emotionally and behaviorally. And so our, our programming here and the experience that we've tailor fitted to each of our students is intended to grow all parts of the child, not just the academic part that was the main focus in our junior highs. You know, in a, in, a, in a changing world, making sure that our students have real life experiences to work with kids, work with other students that are similar and different to them is super important. Um, and, and being the, the magnet site for the medically fragile, medically complex students, and have, being the epicenter for, for, for change and diversity in this school district, and to see these kids do incredible, amazing things with one another makes all of us proud. Community Ed serves a great purpose in our community and helps keep families connected. Community education has something for everyone. I really love watching the kids improve. Come and see us at Community Ed for a good time for kids and families. Commun I'm Rob Bach and I'm the principal here at Stillwater Area High School. And we're located just south of Highway 36, almost at the intersection of Highway 5 and Highway 36. Uh, we are actually part of the oldest school district in the state of Minnesota. So we have a long-standing tradition of academic excellence dating back way before a lot of other schools and districts. Uh, we're at right around 2,800 students. We're a 9 through 12 high school, so we average almost right on the dot at just about 700 kids per graduating class. Our academics are, are off the charts. I literally just gave a tour to um, executives from Anderson Windows who wanted to come in and see our fabrication lab. And our students took executives from Anderson Windows and showed them the different uh, pieces of technology that we have, the different machines that they use on a daily basis, took them through their design process. Uh, from an athletic standpoint, we're just wrapping up our fall season right now, and I think um, I'm about to go to our sixth different state tournament. So literally we've had six different teams qualify for state tournament appearances just in our fall season alone. Stillwater Area High School music programs, whether it's choir, whether it's band, whether it's orchestra, um, are the cream of the crop. And literally kids from other schools want to come hear what our kids are doing to get a sense of what they can be. And other directors want to come see what we're doing to get a sense of what they, they can aspire to. We are training 
tomorrow's leaders. That's who we have in schools, and that's a, that's a charge that we take pretty seriously. We are about developing communicators. Um, we want kids to be critical thinkers. Um, we want them to be able to collaborate with each other, self-advocate. That really is the portrait of a graduate that we are working on developing here at Stillwater Area High School. Kids have to have skills that transcend certain job skills. We're intentional about developing those other pieces, and those are the kinds of kids that are going to wind up being leaders in, in tomorrow's society. Back here at the St. Croix Valley Rec Center, 6-3. to three, The Red Knights of Benilde St. Margaret's have taken a three-goal lead into our third period in night number one of a new girls' high school hockey season. As let's go back through that second period in scoring, it started off with Ella Hasqua, what would be her first goal of the game, jumped out of the penalty box right after a Stillwater power play, then went down the ice and scored. Then Kendall Hassler just minutes later would follow up to make it four to two. St. Martin on the power play had the response in that period for the Ponies. That cut the lead back down to four to three, but then right after that, Kendall Hassler again, a two goal night for the junior uh, for the Benilde St. Margaret's Red Knights. And that was then a late shorthanded goal on a breakaway goal, shorthanded with just two seconds left coming in this third period of a Benilde St. Margaret power play. As we take a look at some of the goals, there was the late goal. That is going to be Taylor Hansen's breakaway goal. Just comes up with the turnover, took it all the way down the ice herself, and Hansen right there to bury that breakaway chance. And that is what had goal number six in this one for the Benilde St. Margaret's Red Knights. And similar to last year's game, it was the Ponies who had a deficit going into period number three. This time, it's a three goal deficit into this period number three. Last year, it was the Ponies trailing by two before these two teams met up. But still, it's been a fun one here tonight between these two teams. We've had lots of action, but Benilde St. Margaret's just using their strength and experience to jump all over a Stillwater team. Just felt a bit shaky, just couldn't quite corral in those chances that they had wanted, but Stillwater had those loose pucks in and around the Benilde St. Margaret crease. And just unfortunately, some of those turnovers led to the Benilde St. Margaret Red Knight goals that have them in front here, six to three. And we mentioned it, we talked about it with Annie Cashman earlier. You wanna talk about a tough schedule to start after tonight, you host Creighton Durham Hall here for the Ponies right here at home. Then it's to the Minnetonka Skippers, a team just loaded with D1 talent from all across the Metro. Right after that, it's a trip to Mounds, the Mounds View Irondale on the road in those upcoming right after Thanksgiving for these Stillwater Ponies. So six to three headed into this third period. So right after that St. Martin goal done, it felt like the Ponies got themselves back into that second period. Then just some turnovers led to breakaways and the Red Knights, they did not miss on their chances. No, I mean, as far as the great period for them, I mean, it was solid. They got everything they wanted to. They might have maybe thought they could have done more with that first period. They showed in the second period what they can do and you can see the talent. You have to be really careful about the breakaways and the rebounds. I think those are two things that you have to have your defense and your goalie keep an eye on. Two goal night for Taylor Hansen. Kendall Hassler with two goals in this one as well. Lizzie Hamill with a two assist game and Josie St. Martin, the two assists and a goal here tonight. There, you can see Lang and Finn talking. Two defensive minded players. Like Chatton, it. love to see that communication happening on the ice. It is two seconds of a five on four as it's tangled up right off the faceoff and Duffy comes right back out, out of the penalty box. So another power play goes awry for this Pony power play unit. And we get our third period underway here in Stillwater. Ponies and Red Knights, good matchup to open up a new season as here's a pickup out of neutral ice. Looking for Hansen, couldn't get that pass connected through. Duffy from the top of the slot goes down on some contact. The Red Knights able to hold the zone here early on. Hansen out of the near circle. Sends it high for Rusinski who sends it through on goal and that one was covered up by Lily Timmons, the 
Shots on goal did even out in that second period, 11 to nine. It's 22, or 23 now for the Red Knights to Stillwater's 20. Yeah, early on, I think you said it was 11 to two or something like that. Absolutely. It, it really did turn around with the power play. But I can't think of too many goal shots on goal that were dangerous where you thought, oh nope. man. You know, they, they got lucky or they got unlucky there. It, it, to me, it felt like a very much of an attack yes. on Walsma, but but nothing where nothing really that, that she couldn't handle. This is where it's felt like the six to three score line. Just a bit unfair to the ponies. Like you said, Don, how they have really played throughout this game. And Stewart comes up with a face-off win inside of the Stillwater zone for the Red Knights. March will have to collect out of the corner. Opening seconds of our third period. Off runs right into a linesman who uh, did not let the pony skate anywhere forward. Comes back to March inside of the Stillwater defensive zone. Opening seconds of our third period here in a three goal Benilde St. Margaret team. Saw their season come to a close in the section semifinal to a very good Edina team last year. These ponies losing to Gentry Academy, the eventual state champion Class 2A girls hockey. High through the slot. Ponies tangled up there with a red knight, but Zakasharsek comes away with it. This one skips away from Morris, and it's picked up deep inside the defensive zone for Audrey Hackler. Skates it through up ice, and Hackler with a good state down the near wing. Sends it into the corner. Pasqua first there to it for the red knights. 15.07 to go in this third period. It's definitely been shifts in momentum where it's felt like the Ponies have had more control as Pasqua comes up with a save. Oh, right there on the rebound. Not able to get a lot of that was Evelyn Mickelson. And the Red Knights have just done a great job getting pucks on goal and generating those kinds of chances. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say, I was going to say, let's keep an eye out for number 10. Stewart has done some good job skating, but man, Mickelson there gets a nice chance. Exactly what she'd want. Now she's at the faceoff circle. 14.57 to go in this third period. Ponies want to draw out of their own zone and work it out to neutral ice. Maddie Finn works in with some contact as this one will skip ahead for Hassler. Kendall Hassler, really strong evening for the Red Knights, has two goals. As this one skips over to the far boards, punched back in deep by Zacharshek. Trying oh. to clear it away, it turns into a turnover, and Hassler with the look there on goal. Got tangled up, couldn't come up with the rebound. Playing with some fire there as the Ponies couldn't clear the zone again that time. Emma Chard is able to play it cross ice. And it ends up out to the stick of Rusinski, sends it in toward Timmins. Great reaction by Timmins, too, who had no heads up that her teammate was going to give away a turnover like that. Stillwater turnover ended up onto the stick of Rusinski for a moment. Now St. Martin skates through neutral ice on the zone entry, sends in a backhand, just dumps it into the far corner. First one to it there is Brooke Nelson. As March sends one through, that's deflected, and it was a pony in front of goal in the area. Now on the wraparound chance, no problem. And that look on goal there from Dimitra Walls going to come up with that save. That bouncing puck was more of a threat than that uh, wraparound. 13.41 to go, we'll have an icing that'll bring us back down to the Red Knights zone. And St. Margaret, they certainly haven't looked more defensive going for chances at the other end, even though they've got this three goal lead. Yeah, they it's, it, they, don't, they certainly don't think they look, look, look like they've let up either. Sorry, got stopped, got stuttering there. Now the face off to the glove side of the Benilde St. Margaret goal. Comes out to the point, ends up out of the corner. In behind the Red Knights goal line, coming away with it, trying to force it in front of goal was DeJarnet. Couldn't connect on a pass, and the Red Knights send it all the way through. Not going to be able to skate through that icing, and we'll do it all over back inside the Benilde St. Margaret zone. Faceoffs have felt to be pretty even between these two teams, despite the score line. But the Red Knights really playing with a strong physicality on the puck right now that has just had them, almost in this game, in control of what they've been able to do as a unit. This one skips away from Audrey Hackler off a face-off win for the Ponies. Sticks into the corner. Not able to come away with it there is Olivia Williams. The senior couldn't come ahead forward with it and take some contact is Ben Dixon who loses the puck. It ends up 
onto the stick of McKenzie. And he sends it deep into the corner. And Knight's not able to clear. Shot from the points, gonna ride its way into the banner rafters here inside the St. Croix Valley Rec Center. So a 6-3, but St. Margaret lead with 20, uh, 12 55 that is, left in our third quarter, the third period. Probably the longest time of action where we haven't seen like a power play or uh, anything like that, or a goal. Nice off win there for St. Martin. Gets collected right off the zone by Emma Shard. Pushed in behind a goal, now St. Martin finds some space, throws it in, backhanded, misses everything wide. And ends up onto this near side corner. There's Addie Finn with it, tries to throw it in front. That skips away from everything. Ends up through Bailey Gray for a moment. Better offensive zone time here for the Ponies. As St. Martin comes up with it, turns and fires in the slot, batted high in the air, and it just skips wide of that Red Knights goal. Stillwater players trying to figure out how they can tap that in. Finn sends a shot in wide. Nelson picks up the rebound, forcing it back in front. Comes away with it is Kaylee Koopman up ice. Koopman just plays it in deep. Ponies will chase. Red Knights will get a change. But better minutes inside the offensive zone there from Stillwater. Absolutely, the kind of period they need. But the Red Knights still not letting them connect a lot. You know, it's more shots and not, not direct passes. No one-timer type of opportunities being allowed by the Red Knights. Rusinski has this one taken away as Dejarnet moves in and just sends a chance high. A weird deflection left a loose puck right at the blue line. Now this one comes free on the near side for Hassler to move in. Let the Ponies defensively cover down and recover. As Timmons got a stick to that loose puck on Timmons' stick side. Coming away with it are the Red Knights and feeding it in front. No one there for Mickelson's pass. And it ends up back clear through neutral. Yeah, speaking of Mickelson, she was waiting for Hassler to pass it. There's going to be a shoulder, and she goes down, covers her face as she is in pain. It's going to be number 22 is going to the box. That will be Addie Finn into the penalty box for the second time. Had that coincidental minor earlier. And with 11.18 to go in this third period, it will be a tripping to Finn and a power play opportunity. Only time the Red Knights have been on the power play. They did strike with a Kendall Hassler goal. And looks like we may have a Red Knights timeout here before they go on to this power play. And Kelly Panic, Kevin Gray maybe recognizing you strike here on this power play and still a good amount of time in this third period, but it could be a game-defining goal that would put you 1-0 on the season. Yeah, interesting. I think it's an interesting time for a timeout, right? Because Benilde St. Marcus has, a, has this game well in hand, and they're about to go on the power play. Good idea, I guess. You know, like you said, get in and get the kill shot if you can. Get that seventh goal. Get this game out of reach. And uh, maybe you uh, wants to use all of these two minutes to really dishearten the Stillwater Ponies. So it'll be a Benilt St. Margaret power play as see Annie Cashman there and those Ponies talking over things on the penalty kill, the Red Knights. And meanwhile, it's a one for four night so far for the Ponies on the power play. And, and look, Don, we knew this was gonna be high scoring, two talented teams, two physical games. And really up until that late stretch there in the second period, it had really felt like the Ponies were right in this game with the Red Knights, but you gotta give Minnesota St. Margaret's a lot of credit for what they have been able to do in just controlling big moments of this game. Yeah, offensively and especially defensively, I really haven't seen Stillwater get into a flow. You might see a breakaway here or there, but you're not seeing a lot of flow. I'm used to seeing a Stillwater team that can pass it and you have the tic-tac-toe going on. You see the players trying to do some give and goes with one another, but the Knights, Red Knights are not allowing that to happen. Well, for a circled and highlighted matchup to be game number one of a new season, it certainly has lived up to that manner. But right now, the Red Knights trying to what would extend it to a four-goal lead. But instead, it's Brooke Nelson going the other way for the Ponies and scores! Short-handed, injecting some life into this building with 11.08 to go. It's Brooke Nelson who's got her second goal tonight, and it's six to four. 
Second time that she's been able to get the puck and go with it. She knows exactly what to do and goes top right shelf here. Great job by Brooke Nelson who celebrates with her teammates. So all of a sudden, short-handed, now it's the Red Knights who give up the goal. Boy, and St. Martin, being the captain that she is, comes over to Nelson and says something to her. Pretty sure saying that's what we needed, thank you. Great play by Nelson. How about 10 goals on the opening night of a new season? It's right off the faceoff, St. Martin skilled in, goes down to the ice. Couple Pony fans wanting a whistle, so Brooke Nelson, just a year ago, 17 goals, 19 assists, was second on the team in both of those categories, has two quick goals tonight. You said it, St. Martin said something to their leader as the Ponies now down two here with 10.40 to go. Still got to deal with this Red Knights power play as it comes up free and Timmons on her stick side comes up with a save. There's some contact now that sent a pony into the boards. That's Lang. And right away gets a whistle. And there's going to be a Red Knight headed to the penalty box here. That is Ruby, uh, right, no correction, that is Kendall Hassler. So we will have some minutes of four on four hockey here. And it is Hassler first time to the penalty box for the Red Knights. We have our officials discussing something here off of that Red Knight penalty. And we will see what it is. Just a two minute minor to Hassler. Now it'll be a minute 15 of some very open four on four. And that's Josie Lang, unfortunate. The bit slow to get off the ice. And all of a sudden, now done. Bit of momentum off that shorthanded goal. Four, four on four hockey for a minute 15. You might at the moment say it favors the ponies. It does, and, and I think the, these penalties are something that the referees are starting to get concerned about. The amount of contact. They don't want to see a lot of checking plays. They don't want to see a lot of trips. So that's something that uh, I think they were discussing on the side is how they keep an eye on that and manage that better. Josie Lang, bit slow to get up after taking what is a checking penalty to Kendall Hassler. That has us four on four for another 60 seconds here with 10.15 to go, and that'll be about 45 seconds of a Stillwater power play. Spinning away is Cheney, feeds it over to the far corner for March. That's skipped between her legs. She sends out a stretch pass into Josie St. Martin, who's got some space down this near wing. St. Martin sends it to the far circle as Nelson moves in, and a big save from Dimitra Walsma to a blocker. Maybe one of the biggest ones of the night from Walsma, and, and don't St. Margaret clear the zone four on four. It's gonna bring a face off back down to the Red Knight zone. Yeah, another icing too. As there you get a good look at Lily Timmons. She's gonna have to keep making stops because they are not done shooting at her. Stillwater's taking the lead, shots on goal, 24-23 in this uh, period. It was 11 to nine in that second period, all tied at 11 out of that first. It's a face-off win here for the Red Knights after their icing put them back down deep in their zone. Ponies press it below the goal line, ends up out to this near side corner. It's Ashlyn Hoff on the four checking efforts. Brings out a pass from Bailey Gray down this near wall for the Red Knights. Pasqua sneaks by a couple of ponies, sends it out in front, didn't connect that time with Hamill who was looking to turn it on goal. And the four on four is over, so it is 45 seconds of an extra skater advantage here for the ponies. As Hamill brings it out to the high slot, here comes Addie Finn who's got some space through neutral ice. Addie Finn moves in, a vanilla stick got thrown on goal and Finn sends it wide. On a breakaway chance, up a skater for another 25 seconds. Here comes Finn moving in. Got St. Martin in the middle. St. Martin shoots and scores! It's going to be a power play goal for the Ponies, and just like that, they're within one. St. Martin a second goal on the night. Hold on, everybody. It's six to five as we take another look. Yeah, and look at just St. Martin's gonna sit here and just measure it. Takes her time, 
very patient. Her experience shows off with that patience there. And how about that? All of a sudden, two unanswered goals. You were talking about last year's game where there was a two goal deficit going into the into the third. This time it's three and uh, we are one goal away from a tie game. Boy, and you just had the moments right before that that the <laughs> you saw the Red Knight defender just kind of throw a stick at St. Martin. Literally, and glove. And it turned into what turning into an opportunity here for the ponies as Hassler moved in, had that stick played away off of her attacking move. Now up ice moves Emma Shard with it for the Ponies. In all alone. Whole trio of Red Knights collapse down on Shard as it's held in at the blue line here by March. And March gets a shot away, and it's blocked away by Wamsla. In the low circle, turning it in on goal again as Walsma has to come up with another save as that one turned in on goal by Bell McKenzie, the junior. And the momentum and the energy of this game Don has just completely flipped. T tough angle that shot there, but man, I guess uh, I was sitting here thinking to myself, how is Stillwater gonna get back into this? They just showed you how they can. Good opportunities there. You cannot leave Nelson open, and of course, St. Martin's either gonna get an assist or get a goal, in that case, she gets a goal. Well, you wanna stay on point to follow up a 50-point season. How about a two goal, two assist night for St. Martin as a loose puck in front, and it's St. Martin again! And the hat trick, a hat goes out on the ice. And we're all tied. More hats are flying out on the ice. Amazing. St. Martin was just right on top of a loose puck and another look in front of the Red Knight goal. Looks like that initial shot came in from the point from I believe it might have been Riley Robinson. He looks like a backhanded goal. From the blue line. And that is now three unanswered third period Stillwater goals, and we're all tied at six apiece. My goodness. Welcome back to the girls' high school hockey season, everybody. A hat trick for St. Martin. Because, of course, in a five point night. I believe I was incorrect on that first shot that went in on goal. So it was Nelson and March to St. Martin, who is now on a three goal, two assist night with the hat trick. Is there anything more you can say, Don, on number seven? I'm not sure there is at this point. Uh, nothing, nothing surprising happens, that's for sure. She's, uh, she's a very talented player. Student section keeps chanting USA every time her name comes up because she's a uh, you know, one of the great Americans out on the ice. Josie St. Martin, a hat trick, a three goal third period here for the Ponies has us level at six. As this one skips onto a red night stick as Rusinski now sends this one in and it's the red Knights. Just moments ago felt in control of this one. They're the ones looking for a response. As this one is loose, Timmons has to come up with a save. Still a loose puck, and a Timmons or one of those ponies covers up. Now all tangled up in some extracurriculars after that save by Timmons. Whether it was intentional or not, we'll see if anybody heads over to the penalty box. Doesn't look like it. And might have oh, looks coincidental like someone minor is. situation as well. It is. Looking to be Lulu Rusinski for Benilde St. Margaret's and Olivia Williams, the senior for the Ponies. And I think uh, Addison Finn was the one who laid down on top of the on top of the puck. It's very helped her team in it. Timmons trying to collect the rebound wasn't able to. I think Finn lays down. Great smart defensive play to just get herself in the way, cover the ice, and prevent a goal which would have been you know could be the could be the winning goal in this game Kelly panic and Kevin Gray just getting a quick explanation as our faceoff will move out to neutral ice so we stay five on five Quincy Miners for uh
some extracurriculars, getting addresses for Christmas cards after that chance on goal and the Red Knights and Ponies play on here, all tied up at six apiece. Boy, that one skipped out right in front of the Red Knights goal as this one ends up over the top. Mickelson moving in for the Red Knights, takes that one into it and some contact from Lang. Mickelson went hard into goal. Kessler steps on top of it, now a pony touches up and it is going to be the Red Knights back to the power play with a Stillwater penalty on the way here in the third. How, how did that first period go penalty free? Ooh. It just seems impossible based on what we've seen since then. You are correct, Don. I mean, you're always correct. But specifically this time, you are very correct. It seems unbelievable. Yes, I mean. First period was so clean. Yep. Five official penalties, not including Pensadona Miners. Checking on uh, number 14. Uh, Josie Lang into the Stillwater penalty box. And the Ponies right back to a penalty kill situation here. Where Bernard St. Margaret's, they've struck on the power play here tonight. Now it'll be, as the Ponies had a shorthand, and both these teams with a shorthanded goal as well as this one. Just skips beyond the stick of Kendall Hassler at the far post. Now it ends up into the corner for Hansen. Hansen works it in behind. Sends it out to the point. Gray back to Hansen. Leaves it into the corner. Now Stewart looking for working goal. Stewart fires it off. Might have caught a blocker of Timmons. Gray's able to hold the zone. Gray back over to Hassler. Sends it back out high for Gray. And that time it's Timmons cleaning that up. Couldn't find the redirection from Kaylee Koopman right in front of the Red Knight goal. Yeah, the goal was Koopman was going to redirect that. Great opportunity there and smart play too. Cycling, moving around, trying to find the redirect because you're probably not gonna beat these goalies with a simple shot. I mean, how different even just on the bench in a game like this, Don, are your discussions being down three and put it in the Red Knights perspective with a power play here, you've seen that three goal lead disappear. Yeah, they've gotta be, they really wanna get the win here after that. Nelson shorthanded off the four check and a big save again from Walsma. How about that effort from Brooke Nelson? Went really high, I think it might've went off the mask. Pasqua the other way, sends a shot on that, rattles off of Timmons' glove into the corner. As it gets fed into the near side corner, 45 seconds on this Red Knights power play and Gray will have to chase in deep again for Benilde St. Margaret's. Five minutes to go here, period number three. This was a 6-3 Red Knights lead. And on the power play, the Mill St. Margaret skate in offside with 33 seconds left in what was a Josie Lang checking penalty. Yep, shots on goal, 30 to 27, and this game has seen a lot of action. A yeah, face off right out to neutral ice. And a draw on the way between what'll be Hansen. And Emma Shard, Red Knights come away with it out of neutral ice. They got 27 seconds left and an extra skater advantage. Been into the corner, just trying to blast that one out of the zone. Gets caught at the half wall. Hansen goes down on some contact. Nice effort there by Shard trying to battle for the puck. Ends up to Koopman, now over to Stewart. Stewart stick handles away. Down to eight seconds left on the Stillwater penalty. The blocker save away there from Timmons. Into Hansen out of the corner. Hansen moves toward the slot. Timmons comes up with another stop. That might have caught Timmons' mask and Kessler is first to it. And now Josie Lang is out of the zone. Nearly turned into a two on one. Into the far circle. That puck was loose in front of goal. And it gets cleared away in a huge penalty kill there for the Ponies. Kessler moves right back in for the Red Knights. Good stick away there from Addie Finn. Kessler chases into the corner. Four minutes left in her third period. All tied at six. Gray on the backhand, moves in. That shot deflected into some traffic in front. A little bit of a rebound got fed to another Red Knight and eventually able to clear the zone is Ashlyn Hoff, but this puck is gonna clear the Red Knight zone and we'll come back for a faceoff at the other end. Yeah, that's gonna be an icing. And man, despite the power play ending, Benilde St. Margaret, the Red Knight still kept coming. They are putting the pressure on. Stillwater Ponies doing a great job in front of their goaltender getting in the way and preventing pucks from getting through. 
24 saves tonight for Timmons, 23 at the other end for Demetra Walsma. Both for the Red Knights. These two teams on night number one battling like it's a March section or state playoff type of atmosphere here in early November. We've seen it dialed up, that's for sure. That's good, trying to work that puck ahead. Can't do it across the Red Knight line. In into the near wall, all tied at six apiece. 3.20 to go in this third period. Pair of ponies, pair of Red Knights. There's some contact right through neutral ice. After that puck came free, Red Knights wanted a penalty. St. Martin trying to play it ahead toward Alaska. Now that puck stays free right at the center red nine, and Brooke Nelson shovels it into the corner. Red Knight ties up Nelson. Now the Pony fans wanting a penalty. Not going to get one there. This comes up high to the point for Lang. Lang fires in, and it's a good glove stop by Demetra Walsma to put us out of pause with 2.53 left here in the third. And Walsma was kind of watching that one carefully. She was worried about maybe a redirect going to her left. You could kind of see her twist her body contorting to make that stop because she was ready for someone else to get in the way and redirect that puck. 2.53 left in this third period and a faceoff win for the Red Knights. Out of the corner, coming away with it here for Old St. Margaret work it up ice. Sent into Duffy on the near wall. Duffy holding off a pony. Sends up into the corner. This is Tella Hansen. Hansen tries to shovel it out in front. Timmons couldn't collect on a loose puck. Ends up to the half wall. And it skips ahead and down the near side here for to Jarnet. Ends up all the way back safely with a red knight. This one evades neutral ice. They're going to wave off the icing. Duffy's going to be the first one to it. There's Red Knights in front of goal. Duffy couldn't get the pass off. Finally does to Hansen. Boy, there were just two Red Knights wide open in front of Timmons. As now it's skating through. Stick handling through the slot. And Timmons comes up with another big stop on that look on goal from Hamill. Ponies with some speed as St. Martin over the Red Knights line. As St. Martin on the backhand moves in and it ends up wide of the middle of St. Margaret goal. And at 45 left in this third period. Oh, and that was a dangerous puck that out of nowhere, Dimitra Walsma had to cover up on with a minute 43 to go. Yeah, those kind of turnovers on that end. Give good grace, give good credit to Grace Cheney, who did a great job defensively preventing two Red Dead Knights coming down the ice from getting that puck because if that is a pass is able to be completed, that's probably going to be impossible for Timmons to take two on. Last right off the draw, St. Martin right away. Fed Nelson sending it wide off the high point. That one causing Walsma to draw and kind of sprawl to make sure that puck goes free. Now the Red Knights have it loose down the other end. Moving it on Timmons who comes up with a save and that puck was loose again. With Lily Timmons with another big stop for the Ponies. Stewart comes away with it out of the corner. Minute 18 left in this one. One red knight goes down, no whistle. Here's Lang bringing it through neutral ice. Lang feeds Nelson as Nelson's shot gets blockered away. Now another loose puck ends up in front, still loose. And the red knights come away with it. They've got numbers going the other way. Tired Stillwater Lakes at the moment, but they can't take advantage of it as St. Martin is back to recover into our final 60 seconds. Man, St. Martin is a special player, that's for sure, but the Red Knights are really coming on strong. Some tired legs here now, trying to find one more breakaway chance in 45 seconds of our regulation. Underneath, this is Gray moving in. Into the near circle, Nelson has it played away, skips it ahead here for Shard. This is Emma Shard down the half wall. Bodied off of that puck, it's DeJarnette holding the zone. DeJarnette stick handling into the far circle as that shot's blocked. And again come the Red Knights the other way. Final 20 seconds, stick handling through, a back in a chance and they score! They score with 16 seconds left in this third period. I think I've got Stevie Harris number, oh, was that Pasqua? No, it was Pasqua, sorry. Passwa did a great job with the handling there and just did just an amazing goal. No goal here has been cheap. That is an amazing backhand that goes right into the right side of the net. With just 16 takes left in regulation, the Red Knights strike after the Ponies tied it up here in this third period. 
And quickly, the Ponies are going to have to work as Timmons is already out of the crease in the final 10 seconds. Ponies need one late on here. Here's St. Martin into Nelson. Nelson shot on, saved and covered up by Demetra Walsma on a good look on goal, and there's 2.9 left. My goodness. By the way, that is Pasqua's second goal tonight with an assist as well on a three-point evening. And a face-off with... Face-off win, forces it in front of goal. Final seconds, one final chance, no! And the Red Knights are gonna get the win in the final seconds of our third period. Ella Pasqua with the game-winning goal, but what an effort from these two teams on night one of a new season. Wow, is that about all you can say after that one? I don't know what you can say about that. I mean, a great comeback by Stillwater, and the Red Knights kept going strong up until the end. They were still fighting strong and really making it hard for Stillwater Ponies to get out of this game with a win. This copycat from the beating between these two teams a year ago, it was a comeback, a furious comeback from the Ponies copycatted into the matchup and the meeting between these two teams this year as that third period goes from Nelson and St. Martin. St. Martin on the power play and at full strength as well to make it a 6-6 game. But it's all down to Ella Pasqua coming off an 11 goal season a year ago. Her second goal of the night ends up being the game winner for the Red Knights. I mean, Pasqua, give her the MVP, right? Two great goals like that. I mean, man, that was an impressive, impressive night. Hard to overshoot uh, St. Martin's contribution. Uh, she, she'd probably rather have less points and a better win. Five point night for St. Martin as this one finishes in a thriller here tonight to open up the regular season. Our final score, Stillwater six, Benil St. Margaret seven. We'll be back to wrap this one up here in just a moment. It's Pony Hockey on VAC TV. Well, it looks like John's trying to make dinner again. Got the ketchup and mustard? Yep. Got the relish? Yep. Hot dogs and buns? Yep. Got the charcoal? Uh-oh. We're out of charcoal. What? Well then, what are we gonna eat? Don't okay. worry, I got you covered. We can just do the third period, that's probably fine. The, yeah, that's okay. And, and I'll keep an eye on the monitor to cue when the goals come on. Hello. Wow, that was quick. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, have a good night. You too. Hey guys, Papa John's. Thanks. Oh, yummy. How'd you know? I always do. One. Welcome back here to the St. Croix Valley Rec Center. What a game tonight to open up the new season, but Stillwater do fall on a late Benilde St. Margaret Red Knight goal as this one finishes tonight. Stillwater six, Benilde St. Margaret seven, and Don, it's not much to be ashamed of for these ponies tonight, even not coming away with the win, because what a furious third period comeback that was. Yeah, furious comeback and pretty much nonstop action. I think we had five minutes or so about in the late third where things kind of went back and forth with no great opportunities, but then at the end, the Red Knights continued strong, showed off their talent, and were able to have that one player make one play to win the game. Well, and Josie St. Martin with her two goals in that third period, such a key factor as we take a look at the goals to get the Ponies back in this game, started with Brooke Nelson. Yeah, great job getting open and just doing what she can do. You give her a chance, she can score. That made it six to four as Brooke Nelson Finished off on that first chance, and now we see the first St. Martin goal on the slap shot. I mean, she's just somebody who just sizes you up. You got to be real careful when you're playing against her. You give her an opportunity, she's going to score. Yeah, St. Martin would then follow up with another goal done. This would be the one that would tie it at six. 
just right in front of the net. Great awareness just to be looking for those loose pucks on goal, but then it all comes down to the winner for the Red Knights. Really amazing winning goal here. Just a, as time's expiring, just an amazing back and forth, nice backhand, just well played by Pasqua. And that's 16 seconds left would be all that would need to be done for the Red Knights to come away with this win. Learning a lot about both of these teams here tonight, Don, and again, there's gonna be plenty. We're gonna be talking about these two teams well into the postseason. I mean, if you were waiting for hockey to get started, this is the kind of game you'd wanna get. This was an amazing game. You kind of wondered, could the, how, how could the third period be the way Benil St. Margaret's owned that second period? Well, Stillwater showed that they can compete, and they showed that they're good, and they showed that they can work together and score. Well, it is the Red Knights who will come away from Stillwater here tonight with their first victory on a new season. These two teams kicking things into the regular season. They'll have plenty to talk about here tonight from the rec center as it is our final. Stillwater 6, Benil St. Margaret's 7, the Red Knights. They come away with a 1-0 record to start our season. As that'll wrap us up here from the St. Croix Valley Rec Center, great to have you back for Pony Hockey here on VAC TV. Plenty more on the way, so please stay tuned and join us all season long. Ponies come away 0-1 here tonight. The Red Knights, the late win for Don Ackerman. I'm Hans Bristol. Our whole VAC TV crew here tonight will say so long. See you next time for more Pony Hockey right here on VAC TV.